today we share from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 4. I invite you to hear these words. As he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, in the boat with their father, Zebedee, mending their nets. And he called them. Immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness among the people. This is the word of God for the people of God. You may be seated. I'm sensitive to the time. And I want you to know that the message today is still not that, that going to take that much to do. It's there for you already. And if you haven't opened your Bible and read this passage for yourself, I want to invite you to do so maybe in the course of this week. Because I think it, when we look at these examples of how Jesus began this movement of faith that we are part of today, it's important to know how in the beginnings some of the things were set into pace. You know, I think about this. Jesus came and he knew that he was the Son of God. He was baptized, the heavens opened, uh, the voice of God declared it, and he began this journey of ministry that was going to lead him eventually to the cross. And, and in the course of that, he wanted to gather the people that God would make the need for him to, to, to connect with. And he chose a method of friendship to make that happen. It was possible to hear that what he could have done because of his reputation by this time as one who was as amazing as what he had been and, and surely word had spread once the heavens opened and the, dove des and the spirit descended like a dove as John describes. Surely the word had gotten out as to who Jesus was. John had already sent his disciples as you remember last week pointing him out and declaring him this is the one. And they followed and they learned and they discovered who he was. Here again, this, this amazing connection between Jesus and his disciples is taking place. But what could have happened didn't happen. It's possible that Jesus could have just said, you know what, my reputation's good enough. I'll just deal with the ones who show up at my door and we'll, we'll thin them out. We'll find the right ones. But that's not what he did. We look at this passage that Matthew gives us and we ask ourselves, why is this part of the story significant for you and me even today? And the reason it's significant is because what Jesus does is he does something very personal, even though it's phrased in a way that it sounds almost impersonal. Because I want to highlight for you that what Jesus did is Jesus went where they were. They were fishermen. And he didn't wait for them to come find him. He came to them where they were. And I'm going to tell you a little secret. I know fishermen are great, and I'm probably speaking to a few of them in the church here, and I'm going to be sensitive about this. But you're not always at the top of the social list, all right? And, and Jesus had to cut through a lot of expectations about him to get to the fishermen, I'm sure there were those who were, who were sensing that maybe he's trying to pull together some key people to make this movement of this a Christian understanding of what Messiah is would be come. And, and they anticipated that he was going to be looking for warriors and, and people of battle and people with intelligence and discovering and knowledge and all these things that would be out there and wisdom. And he goes down and talks to the fishermen. I know fishermen are honest people. They only tell the truth and, and, and all that. And there's all that virtue in there and everything. But Jesus knows in his heart that the specifics of what God is going to do 
sometimes doesn't wait for a discovery of whether you qualify or not. Uh, the phrasing that I've heard, and you've probably heard it too, is that he doesn't call the qualified, he qualifies the called. And that's exactly what we see happening here. He goes to some smelly, dirty, hand-tasked, uneducated fishermen, and he begins to build this movement. I joke about it, but it, there's still some truth to it. When I go back to Brownsboro every now and then and I run into someone from my high school days, I still get that same response. It's like, you're a preacher? <laughs> it's kind of like, who would have thought? There's some surprise to some of this. But what Jesus is doing, he's, he's coming to the very ones that God is leading him to, <coughs> For God's purpose, it has nothing to do with what's on the surface. It's what God can do with what's within us. And I think today when we think about ourselves and our own calling, there's probably some parallels here. There's a lot of us in this room that don't feel like we've qualified, but yet we sense in some way that God is challenging us to be a part of this. And we do things like, you know, well, I can't teach, I can't sing, don't ask me to pray, pray in public. Don't, 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 and we give our lists, right? All of our non-qualifications, if you will. And it takes a certain element of God's uh, pursuing us to make it really happen. And he starts to reveal to us that what you're able to do, you're not even aware of sometimes. So, these fishermen are called by Jesus. Matthew has a wonderful way in which he presents this, and it's, and it's in the fact that he uses a key word over and over. You'll see it throughout his gospel. It's distinct from the other synoptic gospels and gospel writers, and the fact that he uses this word immediately. Every now and then, suddenly. But immediately. And we see it surfacing here for sure. Jesus comes, he sees them, he calls them, and immediately they leave what they're doing and they follow him. <laughs> Anybody have that experience in their life? In your relationship to God, was it just like a simple, hey, I need you, you got it, Lord, I'll leave whatever I'm doing, I'm with you. Most of us, our story is going to vary a little bit from that, isn't it? It's not going to be anything immediate about it because the truth is we drug our feet a little bit. We question, is it really you, Lord? Are you sure it was me that you wanted? When did you want me to do this? Is today? Is it now? But in some form or fashion, what Matthew wants us to know is that behind the scenes of what he's describing, God is already at work. Chances are these fishermen had already heard of who Jesus is. They had already had their discussions and talked about what they thought about it and how they wondered about it. And when he showed up and gave them his call, their hearts were ready. Their hearts were ready. You ever had that day when the uh, teacher walks in the classroom, scans the room, and you start that nervous movement inside of you that goes, oh, no, not me, not me, not me. And then the teacher calls your name. Or you had that experience where you're at work in the meeting and you're around the table for discussion and, the, and the, the leader of the meeting starts the business but then stops and suddenly makes eye contact and speaks to you. I'm thinking to myself, these fishermen doing their, their tasks, doing their things, trying to look busy. And Jesus stops and makes eye contact and says, Jim, I need your help. It's kind of like when the pastor gets ready to pray at the close of a worship service and he says, and all of you start looking their way, you don't want to make eye contact, right? Because he's going to ask me to pray. It's that moment in which what we witness here is that the disciples' hearts are prepared and when Jesus makes the connection, they understand already that this is, this is, this is real. And their hearts say yes. 
the, the, the gist of it is this, that we have a church today which sometimes needs to remember that connection between God and us and the ways that he calls discipleship. Jesus made a connection well before this moment that Matthew's sharing. I'm guessing already Jesus had walked the banks of the Sea of Galilee. He had already introduced himself to them a few times here and there. Maybe asked what it is that they do. Got to know a little bit about what they were and who they were. This is maybe not the first conversation, but the definitive conversation where Jesus now comes through and says, I need you. God has a place for you. Uh, you know, we talk about the Spirit of God where he woos us in a relationship, and I think a lot of it happens through the friendship that God creates for each of us. He really does get to know us, and he knows us better than we know ourselves. So what I'm speaking to today is this. If the church is going to model itself in some way in a familiar pattern to what we see here, what we discover is that friendship evangelism has its place in the, in the church, in the body of Christ. If we're going to follow our commission, which is to go and make disciples, we have to make some friends and some connections. It's a wonderful study on evangelism that I did once, and maybe we'll do it again at some point, but it's called uh, Get Their Name. There's something significant about when you get someone's name. Of course, the irony for that in me is the fact that I'm terrible with names, and many of you have witnessed that. But the gist of this study is the fact that when you make the, get the name, you're getting to know someone a little better. And then behind that, it's more than a name. It's knowing the person. It's discovering the heart. It's discovering the passions. It's hearing the needs. It's spending enough time with somebody that you really do begin that relationship. And in that relationship, then God comes and gives us those opportunities where we can say to someone else, you know, this is how God helped me in that situation. You know what? I, I, I'm not going to tell you what to do, but I'm, I think that maybe you could benefit if I shared with you that maybe this is God. We find ways and avenues once we've built the relationship. Jesus is a master at relationship evangelism. Matthew's writing may confuse us that word immediately. But when that word immediately comes along, there's already been a history, most likely. And the immediately is when God has finally got to the connection where a real change in life is taking place. Immediately comes when we invest in it. Immediately comes when we put the effort of getting that connection that grows the relationship that makes immediate possible. I think about what it means in this story, and I realize that this is just one example of the calling that Jesus had, but there's a truth for each of us in the fact that in each of us, we have a, an experience probably where God has been able to seek us out where we are. You know, I hate to say it, but a lot of conversions don't happen in church. A lot of connections with Christ begin a conversation in church, but they happen in our world, in our real lives. And it happens through the friendships that we create and the connections that we grow. And then we bring it to the church for the affirmation. We bring it to the church for the celebration. But the hearts, the immediate part, begins in the relationships. So Jesus calls his disciples after finding them where they are, and when he calls them, they make their response of commitment back. I hope and pray that you and I today can stand in a place that we can witness that in our own life. But it's not something in the past, but it's something that's still going on. Where is Christ coming today in your life experience? And calling you to your next steps forward? And where is the relationship that you have with Jesus Christ making that a difference? Or you're not speaking to someone that doesn't know you, but you're speaking to someone that knows you very well. I get tickled back in the days of Sanford and Son when he would pray sometimes. He would introduce himself to God. The same thing with Archie Bunker. We've seen it in other cases. It's like, oh God, it's, it's me again. Well, you know, it's been a while, but you know. And 
But when we build the familiarity, when we build the relationship with God that we really need to have, we have this connection that allows us to continue this process of the call and response. When we build relationships with one another where we pray for each other, we care for each other, we build ourselves into that relationship of getting to know someone more than a name, but a life, a significant life for God, then we begin to build the relationships that helps us to witness the immediacy of God's call and response. Friends, I invite you to this connection with the scriptures today. Hear the words of how God has built the foundation of relationship that really began to change a world. It began with a simple call and a response built on that relationship that Christ had built. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen.